about Revelation today, and this is part one of what we are going to do because uh, there's something that God is doing in this time and this season, and He's doing it in your life. I'm saying there's something that God is doing in this season, and He's doing it in this church. Oh, yes. And we are not going to miss what God is doing, whatever He's doing, whoever is blessing in this time and season, it is you and I. I receive it. We are it. part of it. Oh, yes. And we shall not miss it. Oh, yes. Are you with me, people? No devil can stop it. No. If God is started, no devil can stop it. Oh, yes. Are you with me, people? Let's go to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou must observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The Bible teaches us a secret, it gives us keys how to have how to be prosperous in all your ways and how to have good success who wants success it is i who wants good success it is i who says god makes all my ways prosperous it is i now the word of god in this verse gives us a lot of secrets and we need to unlock it Oh, yes. Because the Bible says God wants all our ways to be prosperous. So prosperity is God's will for your life and my life. Say success. Success. It is God's plan for your life. So God wants you to be successful. Are you with me? Amen. Did you bring your apple? Oh, yes. Show me your apple. Just bring my apple. Bring my apple. Just bring my apple. Let me see your apple. Just hold your apple like that. I want you to stand. Hold your apple. Hold your apple. Okay. Okay. You all have an apple. Are you ready for this apple? Can I give you a revelation of this apple? The next time when you see an apple, you will think differently about an apple. Okay, thank you. Just hold it. Hold it. You may sit down. We're going to go through it now. I'm going to teach you now something. Now, the Bible says, the book of the law, it talks about the Bible. It must not depart out of your mouth. It must be on your mouth. And what must you do? The word, you must meditate it. Day and night. And do what it says. Then you shall have success in all your ways and you shall be prosperous. So we must not allow this word to leave our mouth. There's something about what's on your mouth. Oh, yes. So the Bible says us, there's something about this word. This word gives you success and makes you prosperous. Oh, yes. Are you with me? Amen. So if people talk about prosperity and success, the answer is in here. Who wants the answer? It is I. So the Bible teaches us, God said to Joshua, listen here, the word you have is what will give you success. But two things you must do, a few things. The first thing, it must be on your mouth and you must meditate on that word. And do what it says and you shall see what's going to happen to you. Are you with me, people? Amen. Now the Bible says here, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now I want you to underline that word, meditate. Now the word meditate in the Hebrew is the word Hagar. So when we talk about the lost art of Hagar, we are talking about the lost art of meditation. So when you talk about meditation, people think it's like you go and you go and quiet in a place. It's not what it is. The devil has stolen it and he's corrupted it. It is not when you go into yoga and you go like this. Mm. No. 
The Bible says something you have to do. You meditate the word. And what you do, you meditate the word, which means you have God. But what does it mean to meditate the word? What does it mean to have God the word? Because the word of God is our success, and you and I, our success. Are you with me, people? Oh, yes. So I want to start something here, and we're going to take it little by little. And as we go on, you're going to see how your life is going to change. I so the it. Bible is not just given to you to read through it, but to meditate it. And some of us, we don't know what it means to meditate the word. How do you meditate the word? How do you haga the word of God? How? Are you just quiet about the word of God? What do you do? How do you haga the word of God? Now, the art, the Bible teaches me something. Now, I want you to write this down. What is an art? An art is an expression of somebody's imagination. They put in a painting a song or an object. It's someone's imagination that's been expressed in an object, a painting, a song, or something. Okay? And art is also a skill that you acquire by experience, education, or... or observation or study so an art is a skill you develop how many of you have done kung fu how many of you have done karate now it is an art now the eastern the devil took the art the meditation and he corrupted it i remember i used to do karate also and they will say there's a time where you meditate where you sit down and you are in a quiet place you don't think about anything you empty yourself but the word of God says, also talks about meditation. But this meditation is not when you are quiet, you do something. And we call it Haga. Can I give you a secret today? Oh, yes. We are going somewhere. Now, the word Haga, if you study in the original, the word Haga or meditation, it, is, it means something. Okay, it means a lot of things. So the first thing I want us to focus on, I'm going to share with you as we go on, I'm going to share a lot of uh, uh, interpretation of the word Haga. But the word Haga, it means to chew. To chew. Now I want you to take your apple. Take your apple in your hand. Let's say you've never ate an apple before. It's your first time you see this apple. Okay, let's say it's the first time. Now, can you take this apple and, and hold, like this, can you swallow it? Why not? Why not? It's too big. What must you do with this apple if you want to get it into your stomach? Huh? You bite it bird by bird. Are you with me? You bite, and after you bite, what do you do? And after you chew, what do you do? Okay, who bites an apple and swallow it? Oh. You don't do it. So the apple is the word of God. This is the word of God. You cannot swallow the word of God. You must take verse by verse. I want to make this Hagar. Very practical to you. Yes. Now I want you to take a bite. A small bite in your apple. Take a bite. I allow you, we are in church, but don't worry. I give you permission. Okay, don't chew, just take a bite. Hold it in your mouth. Can you taste it? Huh? Now I want you to chew. But very slowly. Chew very slowly. Can you feel the juices in your tongue? Huh? Can you feel it? It is sweet, it is sour, or whatever. You feel the taste. And now, after you chew, what do you do? Swallow it. Now, let's say I've never saw an apple before, and I see it for the first time, and I want to ask you, how does it taste? You can tell anybody how does it taste because you ate an apple. Is not so? Is that so? By experience, you can tell somebody, 
An apple, it tastes like this. It depends what type of cultivar it is. Is it a granny or what else? What type of apple? Is it a golden, whatever apple? Are you with me, people? So it means this. Now, this apple, you choose where you want to take a bite. You can take a bite this side or you can take it this side or you can take it. Is it not so? Amen. And after you take the bite, what do you do? You chew. You chew. And all the juices goes into your mouth, on your tongue, and you can taste it. Are you with me? Amen. And when you swallow it, it does something to you. It sustains you. Let's say you are, you are hungry and you eat an apple. After a while, you feel no more hunger. Are you with me, people? Now, let me explain to you, Hagar. You can enjoy your apple as I talk to you. Don't worry. This is a nice church today. You can enjoy your apple because I'm going to explain Hagar. You can eat it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Some of you are now so spiritual. Hey, it's church. We can't eat an apple in church. Enjoy your apple. Listen here. The apple is the word of God. You cannot live without this word. I say you cannot live without this word. And the success, the prosperity you want, it is in this word. It has all the answers of success and prosperity. I hope me. Amen. So what the word of God teach me, when you talk about Hagar, the Bible says, the book of the law, you shall meditate it day and night. So it means you cannot meditate the word of God unless you open it and read a verse. The bite you are taking, it's a verse. Are you with me? Amen. It's a verse and after you take the verse, you must chew the, 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 the verse. It means you must meditate, it. you must haga. It means to chew. To chew the verse. Now this week, what was our scripture? Huh? What does it say? What does it say? What's our scripture saying? What was our scripture saying? Tell me. Anybody? Anybody? Evangelist, tell me what was the scripture? Tell me, quote the scripture for me. Yeah? What does it say? Say to me. Uh, but the Holy Spirit leads us always in victory, prophet. Huh? But, th uh, but I thank God who always leads us in victory. In through because of Christ. So it means when I take, I cannot read the whole Bible, but I can take a verse. So when I take a verse, so the first thing you must look at, what is the situation you are going through? What is the thing you want from God? Are you with me? What is the thing you want God to do for you? And the second thing is, you take a verse. And the verse, let's say 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14, Now thanks be to God who always leads us into who always leads us in victory because of Christ. So it means victory is our portion always. Oh, yes. Are you with me? Now, now you take that verse and the Bible says that verse, don't just read it. You must haga it. What does it mean? You must chew it. You must chew it. You must chew it. When you chew it, it means the more you chew it, the more the sweetness in your tongue, your taste buds, it means the more you understand what it says. Are you with me? So the word of God, you must chew it. You must chew it, chew, chew, chew it. Don't just bite and swallow it. Read a verse and say hallelujah, Second Corinthians, and close it. No. You must ask yourself, Lord, where do I experience defeat? Are you with me? 
So the moment what you do is as you go through the day, you med- you you chew the word, you 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 talk about the word. You say, Lord, your word says, um, in all things, I am more than a conqueror. Your word says, thanks be to God who always causes me to have victory because of Christ. So victory is mine. Wherever I go, I shall have victory. What are you doing the whole day, the whole day, the whole night? You think about the scripture. You chew it. Are you with me? That is what it means, the word Hagar. And what happens, most of us, we don't know how to meditate the word. I see the evangelist is enjoying his apple. Are you with me? So it means just as you enjoy that apple, so much you enjoy the word of God. You must eat the word of God. Bite the word of God. Bite a verse. Are you with me? Now, my favorite scripture. Let's go to Psalm 23, verse 1. You all know Psalm 23, verse 1? Oh, yes. Let me teach you how you are God the scripture. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Now, this is what the word of God says. Now, we go to Joshua chapter 1, verse, verse 8. It says, The book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. What does it say? You must not read the word of God. You must speak it. If you read the word of God, you must read it loud. Are you with me? Some of us, we read the word of God like this. And then we close it. You will not receive anything. When you read the word of God, you must open your mouth. You must say it. The Lord is my shepherd. You must hear what you read. Are you with me? I say you must hear what you read. Don't just take the word and read in sick. Just read it like this. You must, the Bible says it must be on your mouth. The moment you speak the word and you hear it, it does something to you. It goes to your mind. So the Bible says, the book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate Hagar there in day and night. So the first thing when you read the word, the Lord is my shepherd. Don't read it. You must say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Then what are you doing? Then after you read it loud, you say it. Then you go to the next step. You Hagar. You chew the word. The word must manifest. The word of God works in our lives. Now, now, if you are God, you chew it. Then you ask yourself questions. Why do I lack? Why is things not moving in my life? You are chewing it. You are chewing it because as you bite this apple and you chew it, what is do? What are you doing? You are. You are taking this piece apart. And your, your taste buds give you information what type of apple is it. Is it not so? So you in your spirit, you must chew it in your mind. You must think it, why do I lack? Why am I still here? The moment you start to chew the word of God, then it, it starts to give you meaning. Are you with me? So the word of God cannot go further and work in our lives if we don't do the second part. Hagar meditated. The first thing it means to chew. Okay? Are you with me? Amen. The second thing what this word Hagar means, it means to ponder or to think. Meditate, it means you think. Are you with me? You must think. You must. The moment you think, you ask questions. Why is this thing that the Bible says, don't read a lot of verses. The, the problem is we want to read a whole chapter. I want to read, at least I'm read uh, Psalm 23. Okay, hallelujah. You close it, you go your day. But you don't understand why nothing is happening in your life. Because the Bible says, you, in, in all your ways, you shall be prosperous and you shall have good success. Why are you not experiencing this too? 
It's because you don't follow the steps. Are you with me? So the first thing, you chew it. The second thing, you think. You reason the word. The moment you reason, it means you start to ask yourself questions. If the word of God says, the Lord is my shepherd, you shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd, why do I lack? You need to be realistic. You think. Are you with me, people? Oh, yes. So it means the word of God will push you into a direction. Oh, yes. So what is written in the word, God wants it to manifest in your life. Did you know it? Oh, yes. If the Bible says the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not lack. It means God wants you to experience a life of no lack. I receive it. Let me tell you somebody here. But the problem is here, we accept it because we haven't had God, the word of God. So you must first Chew the word of God. It means you must chew it, try to understand, and then think it. The word meditate, it means to think, to ponder on it. To ask yourself questions, to reason. Now, as you go through the day, as you, are, you ask yourself, you think by yourself, okay, the word of God says, now you talk to yourself in your mind, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. It means God doesn't want me to lack health, healing, Money, relationship, resources. Why am I still lacking? Are you with me, people? David had a revelation. Because David, they understood the art of meditation. But we are in the Western world. We are too busy with technology that we lost the art of Hagar. Because in the time, why do you think David went into the, what was he doing in the, in the, in the, in the desert or in, on the mountains or in the field with the sheep? He was not just looking after the sheep. He developed the art of Hagar. He was thinking. He was thinking by himself. I you with me, people? Say think. 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 The Bible wants us to think. So when we think, then things start to happen. Are you with me, people? Amen. Are you with me, people? Amen. Are you with me, people? Amen. You must understand the word of God means if you chew, it means your teeth is doing something. If you chew, you, your teeth is working and your taste buds is working. You are not in a hurry. Are you doing like this? No, you take your time. Some people. <laughs> you must enjoy the moment. Enjoy what you are eating. You take it. And you chew. You take time. So don't try to impress me with how many chapters you are reading every day. Impress me with your Hagar. Because the Hagar will do something. The moment, you see, the, the thing is that you must understand the devil shows us problems. He shows us circumstances. We see what's happening in the news. We see what's happening in the economy. It's not so. And these things, they speak to us. And when you see something on the television or in the newspaper or on Facebook about monkeypox, what happens to your mind? Huh? You start to think. Is not so? Oh, this monkey pox. They say this monkey pox. If you, what happens? You don't talk to anybody. You think. You are, what are you doing? You are haga. We've been taught to haga the negative things, but why can't we haga the word? I want me people. You need to say, Lord, thank you for your word. And this word that you've given me, I'm going to think about it. Why do you, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Why is the Bible say, I shall not like, it's just an example. Are you with me? So it means, the, when you go through the day, you take that verse. You chew it. You think about that verse. And as you think about it, you start to talk about it. 
You say to your wife, your husband, your child, you see, this morning I was blessed, today I was blessed. I read uh, uh, Psalm 23 verse 1, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Then you start to talk about it. And the more you talk, it's on your mouth. The more you talk, it's part of Hagar. Don't just read the verse and keep it for yourself. The word of God is, is made for us to share. Talk about it. But some of us, we read a verse, and when you see your friend, say, hey, did you hear about Susie? Did you hear about him? Then we start to gossip. Are you with me? That's why we don't see any results. Did you know gossipers are the most jealous people? Did you know it? People who have time to gossip are people who don't have time for their own life. They, they, they just are impressed with other people's lives. You say you are my friend. Tomorrow you drive the best car or your life is sorted out. Then your success will be a test for me if I'm your friend. I love me, people. So it is very important that you need to understand that the word of God works. Say the word of God works. The word of God works. It can make us prosperous. <laughs> this word of God, there is too much information in here to change your whole life. This word of God can change your business, can change your whole life. You don't need anybody to believe in you. The word of God says God believes in you. The place I have for you is to bless you, to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Most of us, we know it, but the problems here, we don't believe it. Because we've never Haggai it. The moment you Haggai, you, you chew it, you talk about it. You think it, what happens? Then you start to ask questions. Why is it not my manifestation? Because the word of God must become your manifestation. Are you with me, people? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Now, this apple, if you, is the word of God, are you with me? The word of God, the piece you buy is a verse. Okay? Now, this verse that you buy is the logos say logos. logos it is the written word it is what you read here now when you chew that apple and the taste that comes to your taste bud that is the rima you don't know how an apple tastes until you chew it it's not so Amen. if you've never seen the apple before and i give you i say this is an apple you say what that I say, this is an apple. You say, no, what is that? And you ask me, how does it taste? And I say, oh, it tastes sweet and sour. You say, no, I don't. You don't understand. But if I give you the apple and you bite it, what you know, what you see is the logos. You know this is an apple. But the moment you bite it and you start to chew it and the taste, what you taste in your mouth, that is the rema. And nobody can take the taste away. Are you with me? You can talk about how an apple tastes. Because you've experienced it. Isn't that so? So the Bible wants us to experience the word. We need to understand the word. Now the Holy Spirit take this verse in chapter 23 verse 1. For an example, you read it, it's the Logos. And then when you start to Hagar, the Holy Spirit starts to give you understanding of what you are reading. And we call it Hagar. We call it the Rima. Are you with me? Amen. As you eat it and you choose it, it tastes on your mouth. That is the Rima. That is the understanding the Word of God gives us. Have you seen some people, you pray for them, they get healed, and the next moment, the pain comes back again. What do they say? Ah, maybe God did not heal me. Maybe it was not from God. Why do they say that? That it tells me they don't have the word. But if you have the word, you have the word of God, you have an understanding of the word of God. There's something I want to read to you. Um, if you read Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20. The Bible says there, 
He sent his word and healed them. What did he do? He sent his word, Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So what delivers you? The word. What heals you? The word. Not the man of God. The word. You believe the word and it manifests. Now you pray for somebody, they get healed. Hallelujah. The pain is gone. It is gone. I don't feel it. And the next day, you see that person again. And you ask them, what, were you not healed last night? No, you know, I, I felt good. But I'm not sure if God really healed me. What are you doing? The circumstance talks to you. Because when God is doing a miracle in your life, the devil will come and test that miracle. Write it down. So what you have inside of you will determine if the miracle stays or leaves you. Why do people lose their healing? It's because they don't have the word. So if the word of God says here, I've sent my word and healed my diseases. So what is happening? When I look at you and I say, you are healed. What is that? What is that? It's a word. If I say you are healed, and you say I'm healed. When you go back home and that pain goes back, you say, I am healed. What do you believe? What the devil tells you? Ah, ah, maybe you are not healed or oh, the word of God. Are you with me? So it means if you are sick, look for scriptures about healing. When we minister to you, healing, or whatever, um, from, for example, you, there's a one scripture, Proverbs 17 verse 22. Proverbs 22 verse 17. Uh, Proverbs 17 verse 22. Proverbs 17 verse 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine. But a cross spirit dries up the bones. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says joy brings healing. It says here the word of God is medicine. The word of God is medicine. It's what it says here. So now you get the ah, I feel the pain again. It was gone, but why is it here? Maybe the moment you say it, you don't have word in you. So what's in you will be on your mouth. Say so what's in you will be on your mouth. Will be in your mouth. Are you with me, people? You go for the interview and they say, uh, uh, there's two people and you didn't make it. Then you say, okay, I receive it. I didn't make it. No. You take the word. What is the word God had gave you? What is the verse God gave you? You don't go for an interview. You don't do anything without a word. Don't pursue. Don't start something if there is no promise from God. Are you with me, people? Don't start something without you. Don't start a business if you don't have words. What is the promise God gave you? What is the promise God gave you? If God said to you in Psalm 1, let's go to Psalm 1. I'm just showing you examples how the word works for you. Does it mean anything for you? Yes. I need to teach you these things because some of you, you will be tested. And why do we God is because we don't have the uh, word in us. Have you seen some people, they just go around, go around, go around, but pray for me. Other one, they just go around for prayer. Pray, go to the church, go to that man of God, to that prophet. They just go every time the same problem. The problem is not the man of God, it is you. You don't have word. You don't have word. Psalm 1, the book of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Can you see there? His delight is what? In the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Can you see there? He has God day and night. So it means 
foolish, you must think they would stop thinking about monkeypox. Think about the word. Don't think about your problem. You can't sleep at night. Ooh, tomorrow, so the meeting. Ooh, then you turn around. You, you've got sleepless night. No! You must think the word of God. The whole night think, Lord, your word says, I shall not fear. What can men do unto me? You are my helper. Lord, you are my helper. He push, you push, in your mind, you think the word. You think how God helps you. You think the word of God. Look here, what does it say? And his word, in, and in he, God's word, he meditates day and night. Can you see there? Day, not just during the day, at night. What do you do at night? So when you go to bed, you go with the word of God on your mind. Don't go on to bed with something else, with problems. Some people, they go to bed, they take their problems. They say it's a problem. They take their problem with them to bed. No! Leave your problem. Take the word of God with you. Take the word of God with you to bed. Are you with me? And Hagar, say Hagar. Hagar. He says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Who? The one who Hagar. If you Hagar, you shall be like a tree planted. I receive it. It means the wind can come. You are unshakable. Oh, yes. You are immovable. Oh, yes. Because you, you know the art of Hagar. Go somewhere, my father. People who are God, they are a strong tree. A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. You will always produce, you will always have results in your life. Why? Because you are the person who are God. I receive it. Day and night. Say, I have God. Look else. And whatever he does, Shall chalak. We only take that scripture and say, your Lord, your word says, whatever I put my hand on, it shall prosper. But we don't go to verse 2 that says, He who meditates, who are gas in his Lord day and night. You, it means before you prosper, you need to see yourself prosper. Oh, yes. You need to take the word of God and say, Lord, your word says, when I start something, it shall be blessed. Oh, yes. You think on the word of God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, it says, you shall always be on top, never beneath. Then you think about, why am I at the bottom? It means I was born to be on top. I shall never be down. I shall only... I receive let's, let's, it. Let's go, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let me see you. Let me give you another example. Does this help you, somebody? Oh, yes. I can preach, but I need to teach to you, teach you the word of God. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. The Bible says, Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commands which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. There's a blessing that comes on you and that will go ahead of you. I receive it. Means wherever it. you get, go, there's a blessing that is waiting for you. God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Verse 3, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Verse 6 says, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Bible says, verse 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. It means whoever finds you, they shall be defeated. Oh, yes. Now, if the Bible says you shall never be defeated, and it looks like that this financial thing is defeating you, and what you do, you submit under the thing. No. Hagar teaches you. You meditate. Before you ever are in a war or in a fight, you must meditate the word. You say, Lord, your word says, no enemy that comes against me shall defeat me. I'm undefeatable. Are you with me? So what are you doing? You are God. 
You chew the word. You take this verse and you think about it. You say, Lord, I thank you for your word. Your word says, ha, those who fight me, those who come out against me, they shall not defeat me. Are you with me, people? The Bible says, verse 10, then all the people of the earth shall see you are called by the name of the Lord and shall be afraid of you. The Bible says you are not afraid. You People must be afraid of you, not you fear people. People must fear you because God is with you. Oh, yes. Why are you afraid? Are you with me, people? The Bible says here, Verse 12, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your hand, to, you, to, to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Can you see that? You shall not borrow. People will come to you and ask for money, not you ask them for money. Verse 13, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. This is a powerful scripture. Are you with me, people? Amen. That's me. This is a powerful scripture. So if you take this, this verses and make it and just hagar on it, you will start to see results in your life. Why are you always defeated? It's because you don't know the word. Thank you. You don't know the word. Because the word of God is your weapon. The word of God is your weapon. Are you with me, people? I say the word of God is your weapon. Oh, yes. And nothing that the enemy plans against you. Even, you know, oh, uh, oh, then the devil says, oh, you've got some cold. Then you say, oh, maybe it's cold. You say, no, I am healed by the stripe of Jesus. Oh, yes. You say, devil, the Bible says, resist and you shall flee. Oh, yes. Because the devil only sends simple symptoms to you. We know symptoms. You feel, oh, your nose is running. You know why your nose is running? It's not because of a cold, because of the weather. Now the devil says, ah, it's maybe cold. Ah, you know, your colleague, he was, the whole day was, ah, 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 maybe you, you caught some cold. You think it. You haga. And what you haga becomes your manifestation. You see, the devil will only send you symptoms. And when he sends you symptoms, you are already doctor who are you? You just make a uh, diagnose. It is cancer. It is high blood. It is maybe um, migraine. You, you, give the, uh, you give that symptom a name. And because you give it a name, it becomes your manifestation. Are you with me? Amen. Oh, my nose is running. Oh, maybe. No. It's the weather. Just say it's the weather. I'm well. My body is strong. Are you with me, people? So it means you must meditate the word of God. The word of God works. If the word says you shall always be above and not beneath, you will never be beneath. I say you shall never be beneath. I receive it. I say you shall never be beneath. I receive it. So it's easy to say I receive it. Now you must go back home and think, why am I beneath? It means I shall always be on top of circumstances. I shall always be in control. Don't allow your emotions to tell you how you feel. It's dangerous to follow your emotions. I'm not in the mood today. Hey, when are you going to get into the mood? Are you waiting for something to happen? That is why it is dangerous to make decisions based on emotions, on how you feel. It is a dangerous place to be. You always make decisions based on how you feel. You must make decisions based on your faith. Your knowledge of the word of God. Are you with me people? Amen. Let me tell you this word works. I've seen so many times in my own life. Sometimes I feel like it. I feel not like a winner. I feel like not like, uh, like who. But I say I made the choice. I say I'm a winner. I say I'm always above. Oh, yes. I'm always number one. Oh, yes. I'm the best. Are you with me? Things are working out for me. Things are happening to me. People are attracted to me. People love me. Are you with me? Amen. If you say, nobody loves me. Nobody wants to be my friend. You, you say it. And it's going to be a manifestation. 
Oh, time is against me. When will I get married? Oh, look at my age now. I don't, you start to talk things. Go to the word of God. Go to the word of God and find a verse that addresses where you are. And when you find a verse that addresses where you are, you start to hug God. Say, read the verse loud and then start. Let's say you've got people who, who attack you. Okay? You know people, some people attack you? Oh, yes. Do you know gossipers are your worst enemies? Oh, yes. How many of you heard gossip stories about yourself? Uh, okay, only, only that one person. How many of you, you heard gossip, people gossip about you? Yes. Let me see. Okay, all of us, there was a gossip story about you. You've experienced it. And you know it's not the truth, isn't that so? Yes. And some of the people, they believe that lie. Isn't that so? And you know it's not the truth, but some people, they believe that gossip. So what are you doing? What are you doing? You don't fight back in the flesh. You take the word. What's the word saying? Let's give an example. Let's say you are in a situation where people spread rumors about you. They talk, no, you've got people who just fight you. You don't know why. You don't fight back in the flesh. What are you doing? This is your situation. I'll make an example. What are you doing? You are looking for a verse that addresses your situation. Example now. People gossip about you. People spread rumors about you. People fight you. You don't know why they fight you. You know, things, you don't know why is that. You don't know why you have enemies. You are at peace with everybody. Then you take the verse. You look for a scripture. You go to Deuteronomy 28 and you say, okay, what does the Bible say? Verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Now, this is a promise that God gives you. So what are you doing? The next thing, you open it and you read it loud. It must be on your... What do you say? The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Now, number two, you make it personal. You say, Herbert, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you, Herbert, to be defeated before your face, Herbert. Can you see that? What did you do? You didn't read it in your mind. You read it. You said it and what happened? Your ears heard it. And when your ears heard it, let me tell you, there's a psychological thing. What you hear goes to your mind. Did you know it? What you see and hear goes to your mind. It's just like that. If you hear something, what happens? It goes to your mind. If somebody comes and tells you a story, what, it goes to your mind because you think about what you heard. Isn't that so? And that is why you need to understand when you hear something, when you hear the word, it goes to your mind and you start to think. Then you start to think. But the Lord says, my enemies shall be defeated. And what are you doing? You start to chew. And the more you chew, then you start to make it personal, personal. And you say, Lord, thank you. I don't need to fight back. I don't need to fight back. I, I will just see it's happening. I will just see how things are going to happen. Are you with me, people? I'm mm -hmm. just going to see how God is going to fight my battles, how God is going to come. It means you must have self, 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 look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Self-talk, Celsons. Are you with me, people? Amen. Say, talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. That is Hagar. Number one, you chew. Three, two, you think. Number three, Hagar, it means self-talk sessions. You talk to yourself. So, meditation of the word is not quiet. It's you make a noise. You talk about it. Say, talk about it. Talk about it. So you said you talk to yourself. You say, Herbert, that one is fighting you. That one is fighting you. So why are you fighting bad? Why are you angry? Can you see? Herbert, why are you angry? Why are you angry? Why are you fighting back? No, don't fight back. You know, some people, they use social media to fight. They use Facebook. Huh? 
Then they say, these people who gossip, they shall, they shall, the fire of God is upon you. Those who want to see your downfall, God is sending, God's, your downfall is near. You shall see before the week is over, you shall, hey, don't fight back off. Don't let your enemies know what you are planning, what you are thinking. Just surprise and just put the, uh, in, in, encourage somebody. Just say the Lord is good. Because the enemy is waiting for you to fight back. And Facebook, Instagram, uh, Facebook is the worst thing, place to, to fight battles. I see some people, when you open Facebook, they fight. Then I ask myself, who are you fighting with? I, did not, I didn't do anything to you, but you are fighting me. Then somebody responds, yeah, it is the truth. They shall see. Then somebody else, don't be part of the group who fights on Facebook. No. Go to the word. Go to the spirit. Because it's where your victory is. Oh, yes. Your victory is guaranteed because the word of God says so. Your breakthrough is guaranteed before because the word of God says so. Oh, yes. Your healing is guaranteed because the word of God says so. Oh, but yes. the question is, what are you doing with the truth? You need to haga. Speak it loud. Speak to yourself. I like a murder session. If you don't have a murder, how many of you have got cell phone? Now, huh? Okay, open up your camera. Are you for open, open up your camera. Okay, go, go to the selfie part where you can see yourself in the phone. Open it up. See yourself in the phone. So it means this is your murder. If something bad happened at your workplace or somebody said something and you are, you are very, you feel now angry, you just go to the toilet, put on your cell phone and look yourself. I'm serious. Talk to yourself. Say, Herbert, you are handsome. You are the head. And not the tail. The word of God says in Deuteronomy 28, the, it says, verse 7, the Lord will cause your enemies to be defeated before you. Hey, have a cheer up. <laughs> when you smile, what happens? When you put it off, who's in control? You. So it works. The murder session, self talk sessions, it works. Even if you, you cry, go into the murder, wipe off, and slow, talk to yourself. And how do you talk yourself? Encourage yourself. That is what David did. David knew how to encourage himself in the Lord. <laughs> Pastor Selma, I don't know. <laughs> it shows you don't have word in you. Say, don't, read the, don't try to read the whole chapter. Say it. Try to read the whole chapter. Just get one verse. Just get one verse. And chew it. And chew it. The whole day. Oh. You know what the, uh, what the uh, oxen do? Also the camel. Now this word Hagar, in the Hebrew it's a form, a picture of a, of a, of a camel. Now a camel when it eats, it eats it's the grass and it swallows it. And an hour later, there's no grass. You see the, the camel also. Mm -hmm. He brings it up again. And what's he doing? And that's what you must do with the word. If the Bible says day and night, you take that verse, bite it, goes down, and you bring it up again an hour later. Are you, people say, what are you eating? No, I'm just eating my old food. For you, it sounds, I don't want to say the word. But you know, the camel, they do it. And also the oxen. Some animals, they do it. They bring it up. Nice. Swallow it again. An hour again. It makes you nauseous, but it's what the camel is doing. And that is what the word hagar means. It means to bring it up again and chew it again. 
Not one say, say, okay, the Lord will cause the enemies who fight you to, to be defeated before you just once and you finish. You close your Bible and you finish. I'm finished now. No. When you take the word, you must do it like this. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Okay. The Lord will cause your, okay, your, your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse um, 7. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Deuteronomy 28 verse, I'm just traumatized now. Deuteronomy 8, what are you doing? I say it out. While I'm getting ready for Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 says, uh, the Lord will cause, the Lord will cause, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 says, the Lord will cause, what are you doing? You are God. So it means later on, the more you say it, the more your mind, you think you say it, the more it becomes clear to you. Okay. Then you start to see many people's faces. You see your boss, your manager, your supervisor, that colleague who always gives you a hard time, who always goes to the manager, a supervisor, who, and that supervisor comes back to you and gives you a hard time, and you know it's not the truth. You see that one's face, you say, Ah, oh, Lord, I put in there Susie. The Lord will cause Susie, who comes up against me, to be defeated. What are you doing? What are you doing? You are God. The Lord will start to show you enemies. And later on, you say, Wow, why am I fighting back? Why am I trying to explain myself or, def or defend myself? The word needs to defend me. The Bible says it. So if God says it, it must manifest to me. So it means next time when people fight me, I just relax. What am I doing now? I'm having self-talk sessions. Now, somebody else, wherever they come, they fight me. I'm just relaxed. And people ask me, are you not stressful? Are you not afraid? He said, why? Because now your faith is based on information it's based on what the word says it's no longer a logos it's a revelation you have now you know how does it taste if someone says to you hey an apple it smell it it tastes like biltong if i come and tell you you know what this apple it, it tastes like biltong what will you say you say it's not the truth because you know since you've been small an apple tastes like an apple. Is not so? Are you with me? If I say, listen, this apple, it tastes like a mango. You won't, you won't believe me. Is not so? You won't believe me. So why am I saying these things to you, people? Because you must understand the Lord says, I need to prepare you. We are living in the last days. And the only thing that will, keep, that will carry you through is the word of God. Because you can, will not be, be able to rely on your salary, on people. It's only on the word of God. And people, the word of God says, many shall backslide in the last days. Why? They shall leave their faith. Some will never believe in God anymore. Some will say, there is no God anymore. Why? Because they don't have the word in them. What makes miracles happen to you is the word. Not prophecies. People run, oh, I just run here for prophesy, man of God. Go deeper. You get the prophecy here? The Lord is going to elevate you. The Lord is going to do something. But there's no word. Then you run here. Oh, there's a prophet that you run there. Prophesy, prophetess. Then this prophetess is, the Lord says, uh, don't worry, whoever is against you. I see people, are, I see a black cat that's following you. And every night the cat is meow, 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 meow. Hallelujah, it is true, man of God, it is true. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, well, don't worry, the cat right now, the cat, died. it's the truth. He's prophesying the truth. Hallelujah. The cat is dead. The cat is dead. The meow no more in my house. 
So what happens? Prophecy is there. But after prophecy, what do you have in your spirit? What sustains you is not the prophecy, it's the word of God. Because when I prophesy, I prophesy from the word of God. When I prophesy something, the word of God must back it up. So, are you with me, people? Amen. Don't run after prophecies. Run after the words. Because prophecies will not sustain you. Prophecies are there just to... It's just a witness of what God said to you is the truth. You know the truth. If you always come to church, you want me to prophesy. 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 And the storms comes... Will you still say, prophesy? What is God saying? When you have a challenge, what is God saying about this challenge? No wonder people, they are sick. They are, God heals them. Tomorrow the enemy comes, bring that symptom back, and they say, ah, maybe God did not heal me because they don't know the word. I want me, people, don't base your life. Yes, yes, a prophecy is just a faith booster. But what keeps you going is the word. Are you with me? I can prophesy anytime. But what's the use? I, I, you come to church, Annie Julina, every day I prophesy. I prophesy. It's good, but it's not good for your spiritual growth. Because you need to have a verse. When I'm not there and you're facing a challenge in your house, what will help you? The word. Then you, if people are fighting you, you just say, fire, fire. No, you can't not just fire all the day. Fire on my enemies. Fire, let them burn. Let them, no. Every day you fight, you fight. No. You must come at the place where you say the word of God says in First King. Let's go to First Kings, chapter 5. The first book of Kings, chapter 5. If you read the story, then you have a different revelation. The first book of Kings chapter 5, verse 3. The first book of Kings chapter 5, verse 3. You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the wars which were fought against him on every side until the Lord put his foes under his souls. Verse 4. But now the Lord my God has given me rest. On every side, there is no enemy that comes against me. There is no enemy around me. I've got no more enemies. The Bible says in 1 Kings 5, verse 4, David came to a place in his life where he had no enemies. What is your enemy? Not just people. It can be financial crisis. It can be a sickness. It can be a, a, a challenge you are facing. Then you say, I've got no more enemies. So the Lord wants to bring you to a place where you don't have many more anymore, eh, eh, enemies anymore. Where you are at peace. You are, your life is peaceful. I mean, you, every day you fight, fight. At your house, you fight, fight, fight. Every morning, fight, 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 fight. At your work, you fight, fight. You know some people, they only want to fight. No! You cannot fight the whole day. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual, no! That's why you've got your spiritual father and mother to do spiritual warfare on your behalf. Have you seen a sheep, a, a, a sheep and a shepherd? The sheep fights the wolf the whole day. Have you seen it? No. The sheep eats and the, the shepherd fights the wolf. The sheep don't eat. The job of a sheep is to eat, not to fight. They just eat, drink water. Why do you think a sheep, his head is down, not up? Just to eat. Mm, nice grass. And drink the water. Mm, 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 mm. The, the wolf is there. Say, ah, I'm going to eat you. The shepherd is there to watch. He's got his knob kitty and his stuff. The knob kitty is to fight the enemy. The stuff is to just take the, if a, a sheep is going to stay, say, hey, come here, come back. Just put it on his, come back. That's the job of a sheep, to put the sheep in line. If there's a sheep that wants to go, say, hey, you're going the wrong way, come here. If there's a wolf, say, hey, the wolf. Are you with me? But you are a sheep, you fight the whole day spiritual. If you meet people 
who always do spiritual warfare, you will always find out they don't have a spiritual father and mother. You will always find that people are always doing spiritual warfare. They are not under submission. People under authority, they don't fight. They enjoy life. Are you with me? I fight here, fight there. No, it's not your job. So the Lord, if the Lord says, I want to give you peace from every side. If that is the promise God gives you, then you say, Lord, I thank you. I shall not fight anymore. In this house, we shall not fight anymore. You give rest in this house. I shall not fight my husband, my wife, my child. No, you always fight your child. You and your child are always fighting, fighting. Some of you mothers, the whole day you fight. Come here. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? The whole day you go like that. Come here. You. Where did you wash you? Where did you wash you? Where's the dishes? Where do you clean? You know mothers like that. The whole day. That is not God's plan for you. God wants you to have a rest to talk to your child. How was your day? Oh, talk, not scream. Fight, no. Rest. If it's not in your house, then you can take the word and have God say, why is there no rest in my house? Why is there no peace in my house? God gave David rest from all his enemies. Why am I don't have a rest? Today I declare and decree rest in my house. They shall not be fighting anymore. At my workplace, that one is always fighting me. Oh, you know, you got always that colleague, that one at your workplace. They always fight you. You say, Lord, today, Tom, who's fighting me? I speak peace. I speak the word of God says, peace from all his enemies. Gave him rest. Today, I speak for Herbert. I've got the rest all over. Are you with me, people? Amen. What did you do? You had God. You chew the word, you think the word, and you have self-talk sessions. You talk to yourself. What are you talking? Oh, I'm going to kill him. Oh, tomorrow when I go to work, I will put some, get some, uh, you know this, I, I will get some red, 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 yeah, you get the red, red pin. He likes those pink sweets. I will put that red, red, I will put it in, when it goes for, I will put, I will, why do you think like that? There's no word. You think revenge. That's not you. No. Some children of God, they think revenge. Then I ask myself, are you a demon or are you a child of God? I'm asking myself. If you say you're a child of God, but you are thinking, how can I destroy him? How can I destroy him? close the church how can i make the church fall how can i ch close the children's church how can i do this you just think the whole day you are demonic you are no longer full of because the bible says before judas went to be, be, betray jesus the bible says the devil ended judas some people the devil enters them like judas then you don't understand. He was not my brother. Oh, I love you, my brother. Oh, man of God. You are, you are my man of God. You are my papa. You are my, you are my hero. You help me. Tomorrow you want to kill me. Then the devil has ended you. How can you call yourself a child of God, but you just talk nonsense, gossip about another child of God? And even you are, you dare have no respect for authority. You talk bad about other men of God. You've, a demon has ended you. You are no longer a child of God. Are you with me, people? If you think the whole day, how can I kill? How can I destroy? You are not a child of God. Take the word of God. Think the word of God. Hagar. Let the word of God be on your mouth, in your mind. Hagar. You have self -taught. Talk the word of God. Say, Lord, I thank you. I have rest. I shall not fight. Over the years, I had so many people fight me. But never did I fight back. Never did I still ever talk back about another person. Because I know where is my, my, my battle. I know where is my, my victory. Are you with me, people? Because I have the word. I just take the word and I use the word. Then I stand up and say, Father, today I declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak peace. Peace. 
rest in my life. I shall not be in fight anymore. The word of God says in First uh, 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 Kings 5, God gave David rest. And I'm also your child, God. You give me rest. Can you see my prayer? It's based on the? Can you see? It may, the word of God makes life so easy. Everybody stand. We go continue next time. Did you learn something? Oh, yes. Okay, I'm giving you homework. Okay, can I give you homework? Oh, yes. You take your favorite scripture. Go and look for your favorite scripture. What is your favorite scripture? Huh? Okay, what, what verse, verse, just one verse. Verse one. Verse one. Okay. Pastor Master, what is your favorite verse? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Okay. Um, what is your favorite verse? Yeah? Psalm 23. Verse? Oh, the verse. Verse what? Okay, not everybody. Okay, mm. here. What is your favorite verse? Psalm, Psalm uh, uh, 23, verse 6. Okay, what does it say? <laughs> Surely goodness and favor shall follow me. Okay. There, Mr. Chiroro, what is your favorite verse? Matthew 33, verse 6. Okay. Matthew 33. Matthew 30, 36, verse, verse 3. Matthew 30, 36. M Matthew 33, verse 6. Matthew only have 28 books. Ma oh, six. Sorry, Matthew, Matthew 6, verse, ten, verse oh, 33. Oh, now I understand. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe you've, you discovered books that I... No, prophet. I know. Okay, yeah? Say it. Seek first the kingdom of God and the rationalism of our phone you. Why is that your favorite verse? Because everything what I do, I must first put the church on front, then I do the rest of the best. Does it work for you? Is it work for me? Huh? Hundred percent. Give us a testimony. Something. Ah, uh, money. Okay. What, I was giving my ten percent. Okay. When I give my person ten percent, I think it was twice. Then I at work they put my money increase. Can you see there? Can you see there? So the word works for him. Are you with me? So if that one is working for him, what about other verses? So it means why you don't have what you don't have. I almost wanted that song. Why you don't have? <laughs> why you don't have what you don't have is because you don't know. Okay, lady here, what is your favorite verse? Yeah, let's hear here. No. Yeah. Um, it's Genesis verse 1, verse 1. Okay. How the Lord made the, the world. Okay. And how he created me. Okay, tell I us see, the verse. I see myself in that word, how he created me. Okay. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, let's go there. The usher of the green and the black here. Antonia. Let's hear what is your favorite verse. It's no good I teach you. I want... Asked, we must use the word, okay? Prophet, uh, my verse is, uh, prof, uh, what is this? Preke 40 vers 1. Yeah. A wise woman build a house. Okay. Are you building your house? Yes, prophet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Tina, yeah, Tina, let's hear what is your favorite verse. Yeah, that's Tina. What is your favorite verse? Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Okay, what does it say? For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you. Why is that your favorite verse? So, because God knows the plans that I have for me and I don't have to fear. How does that verse work for you in your everyday life? In my every, I, I, just, I just put my trust in, in God. When do you use that verse? When is that verse most important in your life? What time of your life? I don't understand Okay, that verse, when is that verse very important in your life? When you go through what or something? When I have a lot of troubles or panics on my mind, mm -hmm. then I know that God is there, always. And then after you think that scripture, what happens? Huh? After you think that verse, 
How do you feel? Oh, I feel relaxed because I know he's in control. Then you don't stress anymore. I don't stress anymore. And then what happens afterwards? Do you start to see results? Yes, yes I do. Can you see? Can you see there? Say the word works. But we don't know how to. That is what I'm going to teach you the art, the lost art of Hagar. If you run for prophecies, you will always see people who run for prophecies, they are not stable in their ways. They think a prophecy must fix everything. A prophecy is just there to, to, to reveal to you God's personal plan for your life. But the word of God is what carries you. Okay, that lady there. What is your favorite verse? That one with the pink? Yeah, what is your name? Okay, what? Eh? Nomsa. Okay, Give, what, what is your favorite verse? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2 talks about love. Okay. Yes, so what uh, this verse has changed about my life is uh, the way that I used to be when it comes to showing my love to my family and my sisters. It has actually changed a lot. Okay. And uh, ever since I came to this church, the love that I received from the people, uh, it's so overwhelming and I'm really grateful. Okay. Okay, when things are tough in your life, okay, let's say you're going through a challenging situation. What is that f your, your favorite verse? Okay, when I'm going like through challenging situations, yeah. I read Psalms. The first one is Psalms 121, which says, I will look up unto the hills from where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. I usually pray uh, using that verse because it strengthens me. It gives me strength. Okay. And after you pray that verse, have you seen the results? Yes, I have seen results. Give us an example. Okay. Uh, for example, in my workplace, like uh, this year, my boss just came and then he said that I want to increase your salary. How much do you want me to increase it with? And then I told him. And then when um, it was um, about two weeks when you we talked about it, and then my salary, when it came into my Who account. Who talked about it? My boss. Okay. Yes. So he just came. I was having lunch. And then he was like, uh, I want to increase the salary. How much do you want? And because of that verse. Yes. Can you see? Can you see now what I'm teaching you? I'm not wasting your time. I'm helping you because where life is going, we need the word. Because the word works, it will produce results in your life. People will look at me. There was a time that people look at me. They say, now, you know, we have this place and the other place. There are some men of God that ask, how is it possible that you can keep two places running with the people you have? Is it the people? Yes, maybe, but not really the people. It is the word. Because what I do, I stand on the word. I will be people. So the Bible says, with God, you are the majority. I will be people. So whatever you are planning to do in your life, even if it's big beyond your, your abilities, if you have God on your side, don't worry who's on your side. God will make it happen. Why? The Bible says with God, all things are? Or does it say with men? With God. Now, that is my answer. So I stand on the word. I say, Lord, your word says with you, all things are possible. I don't look at number of uh, people. No. I look at God. Because with God, we are the majority. Are you with me, people? Oh, yes. So that is why I say, Hagar, you must take the word of God, meditate it, start to talk it. The word works. So this week, I want you to learn a new verse, okay? Today. When you go back home, go open up your Bible and learn a new verse, okay? So what are you going to do that verse? You do what I teach you. You open up and you read it loud. And this whole week, you talk about that verse. And Sunday, I want to hear another verse, huh, Derek? Not Psalm 23 another verse and you will see as you do what i teach you this week you will start to see results some of you will come back with a testimony I based on what it. i teach you today i receive it not based on a prophecy a prophecy yes is a testimony but based on this word because this word works are you with me people we are talking about the lost art 
of Hagar. It means it is lost. Some don't know how to use it. Everybody's got a Bible in their, in their house, but they don't see the manifestation of what God promised. Isn't that so? Because they don't know how to Hagar it. Let's pray. God, I just pray in the Spirit. Oh,